Welcome to the Audi Garage. In this episode of the B627 project, we're going to reinstall the valve covers, the intake manifold, and button up all the rest of the accessories. So stay tuned. To make this easier so we don't forget anything, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way to the top of the engine to button everything up. So if you remember from one of our older videos, there was a leak coming from that lower oil pan seal. So we're going to start off by redoing that with some black RTV and then working our way up, bolting on all the accessories, and then finally sealing up our valve covers and the intake manifold. So now that we have the engine harness installed and all the valve covers and oil pan bolted up and the intake manifold, uh, we're going to start putting on all the intake piping and then uh, the spider hose that we made in that previous video and then we'll do a boost leak test and find out if we have any leaks. the intake piping and inter intercoolers mocked up, the next thing we have to do is boost leak test it. So what I have set up over here on the Y pipe is a homemade boost leak tester. I believe it's a four inch coupler with a PVC plug on the end and then I just use a small uh, pressure regulator to modulate the pressure. I also have a boost gauge hooked up that runs off of the line that would normally go to the fuel pressure regulator and then I can see more accurately what pressure I'm pushing in. Uh, the fuel pressure regulator is just left on cap now because it doesn't matter, there won't be a leak by that. So uh, let's fire it up and see what uh, we have to tighten up. So after our first test I realized I had one big problem and I had forgotten the uh, hoses from the inlet pipes so I put those on and now uh, our second big problem has uh, come up with the 034 inlet pipes at the turbo seal. So I'm going to put some air on this and you'll be able to hear what I mean. So as you can hear, I'm losing a lot of air through that O-ring seal, so I have an extra set of those and I'm going to pull this apart and check out the one that's in there. Uh, if it looks damaged, I'll replace it. If it doesn't look damaged, I'll still replace it and see what happens. Uh, it doesn't seem to be leaking at all from the other side. So I noticed when first looking through the kit, there was two sets of O-rings. So I went and grabbed a second set just to try them uh, in the inlet, and they did actually look a little bit different. So this O-ring over here, 0.115, and this O-ring, 
as well point one three five. So they've obviously included two sets of O-rings at, at different thicknesses for some reason. The over, overall diameter looks the same, but since I replaced uh, the thicker O-ring into the inlet that was leaking, it looks like uh, it sealed it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap the other inlet as well, just to be sure, even though it's not leaking right now. And then we'll continue on with our boost leak test. <laughs> I just finished up the boost leak test and found a couple things. So I'd seen a video online of this before, but actually when I sprayed soapy water on the 034 throttle body boot, it's almost as if uh, the air permeates the layers and then bubbles out uh, in between the silicone. So it's not a horrible leak, but it's bad enough that we'll probably want to change that out soon. A major leak that I did fi find was on the intercooler uh, tank. In this crimped area, there was a fairly decent sized leak. Unfortunately, we are using the stock intercoolers just for now. Uh, hopefully we will upgrade those, so we'll just leave that alone. The O-rings did completely fix the inlet problem. Uh, I'm glad they did include that second set. I'm not sure what the intent is with the thinner set. I did also feel some air bypassing through the PCV. So that's probably just a worn valve, but not again, not the end of the world. And then also, I'm not sure if the time lapse got it, but in that last clip at the end, what I was doing was double checking the wastegate preload. So basically just turning up the boost leak tester and holding my finger on the gate to find out exactly when it cracks, which is about five or six PSI on these OEM KO4s. And then when it's fully opened, uh, which ended up being around 10 or 11 PSI. So they're both set evenly, so we can be sure we're gonna have steady uh, boost. So like I had mentioned in the kit review video, uh, we're going to be putting in the BKR7 spark plugs, not the ones that came with the 034 kit. So here you can see one of the new 7s pulled out next to the three of the old ones. Uh, the old ones seem to be gapped around 0.045-ish, which seems pretty big. I prefer to do 0 0.028. Uh, some people do say with the FSI coils that you can get away with a large gap like that, uh, but in reality, I think they run just fine on the 0 0.028. I do it on my personal car and it's run fine on a lot of other people's. So we're gonna gap them all and then reinstall. So you can see I wrapped the inlets with some foil backed uh, heat wrap buttoned up a few things on the engine. I didn't film it, but I went and redid some of the wiring. Uh, there was a lot more non-soldered connections, so I had to add a couple of crimps where it was just gonna be more efficient to do it that way. And then I soldered where I could add some nice heat shrink, as well as I checked out a whole bunch of other uh, small solder joints that looked okay, so I didn't have to fix them. This white wire is a pigtail that will get connected to the car. I'll have to add some sort of quick disconnect. So the next time if this engine has to come out, it'll be a lot easier. So now I'm gonna turn on the time lapse and we're gonna bolt up the clutch and transmission and put on the downpipes. You'll be able to see me fix up these downpipes and the exhaust in a later video. One thing we didn't talk about is the clutch setup we have on this. So when I got the car, uh, it had already been set up with this, I believe it's a Fidanza lightweight aluminum flywheel. So we got a new surface bolted onto that. And then we picked up a six puck unsprung clutch disc from Project B5. We sent this out to the local clutch shop and they didn't need to do any machining on the pressure plate. They said it was okay. Uh, so we're gonna toss it back in as is. Uh, 
throw bearing is fine. This again, this clutch was recently uh, replaced anyway, so we don't need to worry about any of the small maintenance items. <laughs> the flywheel bolted up they're torqued down and then i have to do the 180 degree stretch bolt stuff and it seems like a lot of people have trouble with this my trick is so obviously you just paint mark the bolt so you can figure out how far how many degrees you're turning it but then just on the front of the engine you stick a 24 mil wrench and wedge it up against the stub mount and then nothing's turning so you don't have to worry about turning over the engine or getting someone to hold it or clamping everything into an engine stand or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty easy to do with one person hanging on an engine crane like this. Lapse cut off early, but I managed to get the transmission bolted up. Uh, it was a little bit of a pain, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, but I, I don't actually ever really use a clutch alignment tool. As long as it's pretty centered, it seems to work out pretty well. Uh, so I didn't have any problems with having to realign the clutch or anything. So here are the downpipes fitted up, heat wrapped. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but on the heat wrap, I usually use clamp worm clamps instead of zip ties. That way, if they do fray or come loose, it's not a pain to cut them off. You can just retighten these after you rewrap. And then also I talked about in the, the uh, kit review video about the flange nuts. So these are the ones from uh, some sort of two liter turbo car. Uh, if you ask your parts guy at the counter, he should be able to find it for you. I believe it's M10 uh, flange nuts and they're pretty cheap and they're a lot more robust and have the nice flange to seal up the big holes on aftermarket downpipes. Now that the engine and transmission is bolted together, it's ready to drop it back in the car. Make sure to like and comment below, and don't forget to subscribe so you're notified of the next video when it comes out. You can also use the links in the description below to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website for updates in between videos. See you guys soon.